I hope y'all are having a blessed day. It is I, Melissa, from 70 Acre Studio, and we are here today with our next little project. And as you can see behind me, this is the project. If you want to learn how to do fast, simple, easy, beginner-friendly curves and make a quilt in under three hours, this is the project for you. Stick around, let's get started. These are the layer cakes that we're going to be using today. I was going to just use this one, but I don't feel that there is enough contrast in it in order to get the effect that I want. I do have this layer cake here that is called Night and Day 2. It is by Canvas from Benertex, and it just has black and white fabric and they do have a slight pattern to them so these are what we're going to be using this one is painterly petals and it is by robert kaufman i think they i think they are duplicates so if that is the case then we can use that to our advantage so yes this has a beautiful white on white pattern and a black on black pattern there you can see that. So what we're doing is we are going to be taking, we can take these two duplicates, put that aside. One black. And now this don't 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 have a panic attack. We're going to be doing gentle curves. And we're just going to make a gentle curve. This is beginner friendly. You can do this. It's only one cut. Okay, so we're just going to make a very gentle curve. Nothing to be worried about. And if you don't land right in the center of the corner, that's perfectly okay. So now we're going to take this piece and put it on the bottom. And now we're going to take that piece and this piece and we're going to put them right sides together because they're going to get sewn together. We're taking the next piece and the next piece right sides together and catty corner them if you like. Things straight. Those are going to get sewn together. And now we have another one right sides together. And lastly, right sides together. So that's all you're going to do. You're going to do that for your entire layer cake or as many as you want. Now there will be loss on this. These are 10 inch squares and I'm guessing that they will probably be squared down to about 8 inch. So plan on an 8 inch block and then figure out what size quilt you want to make. I don't like to do quilt patterns that dictate to you, you must have 64 squares. I like to give you the freedom. You can, you can do as big a quilt or as small a quilt as you want. If you're a beginner and you're worried about wasting a layer cake that you love, then you can use scraps. Just cut your scraps 10 inch squares, stack them with a dark and a light, dark and a light, dark and a light, so that there is high contrast, and then make your simple cuts and sew those together. And then you can lay out the quilt however you want. If, you, if you're happy with the curve, then don't worry about it. It's going to be very, very simple and it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be scary. It's going to go together very, very smoothly and then you're gonna square it down to, I'm guessing, about eight inch. So if you make a really crazy curve, you might end up with a seven inch block. But that's why if you are worried about it, you can practice on scraps first. So we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these together. We are at our machine. And as always, I am starting by adding a wee drop of oil in all the places. And I do not have a full bobbin, so I'm going to lose bobbin chicken today, but that's perfectly okay. So we're going to start with our first pairing and they are right sides together. And all you are going to do is start like so. Okay, the setting, I had to change the settings on the camera because it was 
completely blown out, you couldn't see the two seams. So I apologize if the video appears a wee bit on the dark side right now, but they have cookies there and you can actually see what I'm doing. What I've done is I've matched up just the very corners together. And I've taken a couple of stitches and left my needle down. And now we're just going to do the very, very simple job of driving these two curves together. No pins are required, no stress. And now we're just gonna move that over and we're gonna keep making sure that this is lined up. And if your machine has a needle down, that's a wonderful thing. So you can go quite a distance before you have to make an adjustment. Do not pull because these are on the bias and they will stretch. So I'm just aligning the edges, taking a few stitches and continuing on. Again, I'm not pulling, I'm not stretching. I'm just aligning and taking a few stitches and lining up those edges. And that is lined up. And that is as simple as it gets. It's not difficult at all. We're gonna pop this out and we're going to open it up and look at that beautiful block. See, and to square this up is going to be very easy. It all depends on how drastic your curves are and how much things get out of whack on the edges. But this is looking pretty good and it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on with this and I'm going to chain piece. This one got taken out of the machine, so I'll put it aside. And now we are going to work on the next one. And again, all we're doing is lining up these edges right like that. Putting it under the machine, taking a few stitches, and now just driving the individual curves together. And if you need to, you can lift up the presser foot a wee bit, get them aligned, and then line them up again. Don't pull. Pull them away from the, I'm using a quarter inch foot that has a plow on it. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling it away from the plow so I can see that the edges are lined up and then I'm moving it back. And because this is such a gentle curve, you'll have larger sections that just go together that you don't really have to change the alignment on. And lastly, just give this a wee bit of a Adjustment and go. Okay, so that's that one. And now we will continue on throughout the entire pile. And if you want a chain piece, you can. Just, you can get it out of your way like that. And this will be a little bit easier for y'all to see because I have the black on top. Okay, so you can see that those are lined up right there. Taking a few stitches and lining that up just so you can see the edges together. And I can still see them together. You can just see, let's get a little glimmer of light under there. Pull it back a wee bit. You can see how simple this is. We're not doing anything difficult or scary. Okay, I can see that those are lined up. I can go, they are still lined up. And you can keep your finger where you see the end of the alignment. So you can see that they start to veer off right here. So just keep your finger here. And then you know that when it slips underneath the presser foot, it's time to change positions. There you go. You can pull it back. And that is how you're going to tackle the entire stack. So chain piece all of these, and then we'll go over to the cutting table and we will iron them flat and square them up. <laughs> I had to come back and show you this. I knew I was going to lose bobbin chicken, but check that out. I didn't lose, it ran out right there. <laughs> so much for you, bobbin chicken. Okay, that's ready. You can press the seam to the dark side or to whatever side it wants to lay on. And do not start squaring up your blocks until you have them all ironed so you know 
how big of a block you can get. See, this one is right on. So I wouldn't lose anything. But this one, I'm going to lose some. So don't cut them until they're all ironed. Here is another one that came out dead on. And the beauty is no one will know if you had to trim down your blocks a little or a lot. And don't stretch your blocks when you're ironing them. Just give them a good press. You can starch if you prefer, but these really don't need it. Here's another one that was dead on. Thank you, Jesus. If you have one block that's really cattywampus, you don't have to use it. You can always toss it aside. Here are our trimmed blocks. And what I'm doing is, and you don't have to do this. You can, you can let them go as wonky as you want. What I am choosing to do though, is kind of line up the corners, just cause I think it'll make a, a prettier quilt, but you don't have to. I'm just trimming these down to eight and a half inch like that. And as soon as I get done with this, I will start playing with them on the design wall. So again, I'm trimming these down to eight and a half inches. They will be eight inch finished. I only have a few blocks up on the board. I'm getting, I'm getting kind of worn out here, but I wanted to show you this initial layout and I'm kind of calling that Argyle-ish. And you can, of course, get colors to meet, you know, in the, in the diamonds, you could match them. You can mix up the black and whites. You can reverse it so the black and the whites are on the outside. You can do all sorts of fun, different layouts with it. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little project. Another project that you can pop out in a day. It took me less than three hours to sew all the blocks. This layout of two by three makes a very nice baby quilt size. And you could leave it this just like it is here or you can make it larger by adding borders. You can play with the layout as I've shown you in the video. And it's, it's just a very, very fun project. It's beginner friendly. Don't be afraid of these curves. They are so easy. I'm telling you, it doesn't require any skills other than being able to sew a quarter of an inch seam. Don't pull, don't stretch, just let the, let the sides align and sew along it. Even if you're only making two or three stitches at a time and then realigning and sewing, realigning and sewing, take your time and just enjoy the process. And by the time you get done with this quilt, you will not be afraid of curves anymore. So beginner friendly, under three hours. You don't have to use a layer cake. You can use scrap fabric and you can just use lights and darks, low volumes and, and high contrast. So you have many, many options to, for this project. And I hope you give it a try. So I'd like to remind you that you can follow me over on Coffee if you don't know what Coffee is. It is very similar to Patreon. I just didn't feel at home on Patreon, but I love coffee and I feel that being that it ties into Discord, it just makes the perfect platform for me. So as you can see right here behind me, these are my silly birds. If you become a subscription member over on Coffee, I have several tiers that you can choose from you will get access to this and you'll get access to anything else that I throw your way in the future. Please do consider coming on over to Coffee, and please do also check out my shop while you're there. I have lots of patterns for sale. I've got quilts for sale. I have all sorts of things over there for you to look at and purchase. And as far as Discord, Discord is a social media, media platform very, very similar to Facebook. It doesn't have all the, the ugliness and the fighting and the, and the hate and all of that that you find over on Facebook because each person sets up their own server and they deem what is appropriate in their server. So a server in Discord is very similar to a Facebook group and it really, it's just a very fun place to be 
and you can share photos. We could do short videos in there. We have rooms that we can use in there to do group things. And it's just a lot of fun. I get to know you and see some of your projects. You can share photos with me. And if you went out and found the Lord today and you would like to share that, you can do that there on Discord. It is a free service. It doesn't cost you anything. So feel free to use the link that is in the bottom of my video here in the description. And if the link does not work, please leave a comment and let me know and I will respond with a new link. These links that I'm giving you are not supposed to expire, but for some reason they have been expiring. So if you need a new link, just let me know and I'll happily give you one. And I look forward to seeing you over there. I want to thank you all so very much for watching. I love your comments. Please do hit that subscribe button and please do leave me a comment. They just make my day. They just give me so much joy and happiness. And I so appreciate the comments and the time that it takes to watch my videos. So I will see you right back here at 70 Acre Studio with our next little project. Not sure what, not sure when, but I will see you then. Take care of yourselves. Have a very, very blessed day. A very, very blessed week ahead. I love you all so very much. God bless. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Campbell.